Thank you for joining us, Rafael Payare, for our uh, pre-show video today, talking about Mahler's Fifth Symphony, which we'll hear obviously at the end of the concert today. Uh, Mahler uh, famously said that a symphony should be like the world, that it should embrace everything. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Th and it's, it's I, just by your reaction, you can see there's some questions that sort of come out of that. And I sort of wonder myself uh, with the fact that the symphony was written in the early 1900s. Yeah. The world was very different then. Mahler's world was very different than yeah. uh, is that still a conception of the symphony and of the Fifth Symphony that uh, uh, speaks to you, or how do you think about that? Well, yeah, um, for Mahler, he got his first care when he wrote the symphony. He was he had kind of a, this kind of uh, close to death experience. He almost died with an hemorrhage. So, if we see his full cycles, this is the last one that is so life affirming and like embracing life and everything before going once we go into the sixth seventh eighth ninth it's it goes to a completely different world but regarding you were saying regarding all the thing that the symphony should have everything that should be like like the world like the universe everything yes absolutely i mean it's wonderful one of those quotes from Mahler because this is a a, a person that the first time that he went to the niagara falls he stand in front of it and he said, finally fortissimo. So this is what it was in his head. He heard this amazing, you know, turban of water going and splashing and the whole thing. It was like, ah, finally, this is the fortissimo I've been looking for my whole life. So he puts a lot of uh, uh, um, nature, he put a lot of also because some of the symphony, the third, for example, is more about nature, but in here, I think he put a little bit more of the human being itself, being part of this, the Lendler that he had for the third movement. It, you could feel that it's a world, that you have these things going in, in there, and then he put, of course, on the fourth for the Adagetto, this uh, uh, um, love letter for Alma, and the fifth is the most amazing rondo, life-affirming, like, everything is going to be fine. This is my second opportunity, so everything is going to be okay. It wasn't, but for the moment that it happened, it, you could feel it, that it's so joyful that you would just want to, you know, go out and scream of a drink or whatever. It makes you happy, you know? Yeah, yeah, and that, that waltz element that you mentioned in, in the third movement there, that's, that's such a fascinating piece because uh, you think of orchestras at his time they would know exactly how to play a waltz. Yeah. The audience would hear that and they would think of times that they had danced a waltz. And uh, how do you approach that now with, with orchestras today? Is there some... Well, I mean, yeah, um, nowadays we have the internet, of course, and we could hear how the tradition, the Viennese tradition for her, the waltz. But also, Mahler, he left a quite thick part of a pack of instruction for the conductor to you have to do this, you have to remember this, you put an even, because he could just actually put it on the, on, on the music, but he didn't. He just put everything for the conductor, and there are some parts that actually he put the music. This should sound this way, even though it's written like this, and then he puts again, remember to ask this way. Don't let it pass. That, I mean, it's a, a little bit of a control freak in a way, but, but it's wonderful because you see it, you read it, once you get all this whole thing, and then you put it into your head, then you go for the orchestra and ask for it. And it's fantastic because sometimes the orchestras are like, why? And it's like, it's not my fault. That's what he wrote. Look, look at the instructions. It's like, oh, yeah, that's true. Okay, well, let's do it. <laughs> yeah. So it's, uh, it's always wonderful. And of course, there's a lot of traditions and many things with the symphony, but there's a lot in the score and, and on the instruction that he left that it's always great that it can always sound a little bit new, even though it's more than 100 years already. So, yeah. Thinking of this as, as something new, this uh, was sort of the last of his really triumphant symphonies, like you were saying, but it was also the first one of his that he didn't base on songs yeah. that he had already written, and there's more counterpoint in there yeah. and things like that. And do you think about that stylistic evolution, or do you just sort of like start off right with that first note? Funeral no, actually, march? well, I mean, you know, every story, if you don't, if you don't know a little bit of the past, then you could 
get it wrong or get it into a different sense. So of course it's very important to look back what he was doing, but also I remember that even for the first symphony that he used to just go in um, so many letters and things that you could actually read about what he was doing. And he liked to say that he was receiving master classes with Bach, with the um, well-tempered clavier, and he was looking out to the art of the fugue and this whole thing. And you could have the rondo, the fifth movement. I mean, the rondo, the fugue, it's just amazing. And what actually happened in the third movement as well. So you could see how already he was, his homage to Bach, he was trying to put it into his um, crazy world universe and put it into the into the music but then if you see at the seventh for example that the way he put one structure against the other and actually how they interact that the rondo of the seventh it's it's just madness but this it keeps the evolution that he already started with the first so it's wonderful if i mean i i just uh, i love it yeah and uh, you began life as a horn player Yes, I believe. And this yes, and symphony uh, features a famous, uh, lovely horn obligato in the third movement. Did you ever play that? Yes, yes, yes. I was I was part of the, with the Simon Bolivar Orchestra. So I, I I did I did play it quite a few times actually. And he was um, even though usually for horn players, Mahler are a li it's a little bit tiring. But for this symphony, he did it in a way like what Strauss always achieved, that it's in, a, it's in the perfect range, that you could just be completely at ease and play at your full sound or your most dolce sound, and it sounds really amazing and very difficult, but actually it's quite comfortable. So that's uh, great. Are you saying it's not that hard? No, not at all. Uh, it's just that it's very exposed, which is always a theme for the, for the home players, but it's very well written that you could it it doesn't have weird changes or things that make you really uncomfortable but you could play and just think of music and, and, and enjoy what is it like to go from the middle of the orchestra and the horn section there out to the podium and then start actually leading everybody well for my case it was um it was quite organic actually because um, i was playing in the orchestra and everything I started with sometimes doing brass sectional. So of course I did my own section with the horns. I used to do that. Then it started to go with brass sectional, then woodwind sectional, then sometimes um, Caracas is quite a, a, a messy city with the traffic. So sometimes all of a sudden something happened and the traffic just got stuck. So there were sometimes that Gustavo Dudamel, uh, let's say, he, got stuck in traffic and he just called, um, are you already at the hall? Yes, well, start the rehearsal because I will be arriving maybe five minutes late. So it was kind of used, the orchestra to see me go put the horn, let's start the rehearsal and then we start to arrive and then just go and sit and, and then play. So it was very, it wasn't really abrupt. It was quite organic in a way. I, I was lucky to, to, to have it that this way, yeah. Great, well, uh, it's been wonderful talking with you and we look forward to seeing you uh, make your way to the stage to conduct uh, some Mozart and then Mahler's Fifth Symphony. So thank you very thank much. Thank you. Thank you.